Hey guys, I'm your host, Dr. Amit Gosalia, and today I'm sitting down with the one and only Dr. Richard Gans. Stay tuned. Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. I'm actually here joined by my very good friend. Dr. Hey, wait, Richard. wait, wait a minute, Amit. Wait a minute. This is Margaritaville. Remember, my friends, it's always five o'clock somewhere. Especially in Florida. Especially in Florida. The key to good margaritas, triple sec. Triple sec. Ah, that's the key. That's why mine always tastes a little off. Yeah. I never had triple sec. Well, hey, Dr. Richard Gans, thank you so much for joining us. You know, uh, I had this big intro I was going to give you, and the margaritas took precedence here. And uh, you have a beautiful outdoor kitchen there. I can tell that you're enjoying life, and uh, I can see you're not in your lab coat and suit today because no. it's, a, it's a beautiful day in Florida. Friday afternoon, the team said, you know what? You, you deserve to take, take an afternoon off. Well, I'm glad to see that you're actually back in Florida because every time I see you, you're all traveling around the world. You're in the Europe. Well, not so much this year, right? No, not so much this year, but I still see all those photos and it's amazing how much yeah. work you've been doing around the world. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you're, you're, you've you're been a leader in the profession and the industry for many, many years. Uh, you're the king of vestibular sciences. You're a, a salsa dancing master and I won't go too much <laughs> into that, but uh, I've seen you in action. You're fantastic. You're past AAA president. Uh, back in 2004, you were, you were elected president. Uh, and of course, you're the founder and leader of the American Institute of Balance. Uh, tell us a little bit, if you don't mind, just for a moment, tell us a little bit about leadership. Why, why run for leadership positions? And why should people even think about joining leadership positions? Well, you know, it, it's a journey, honestly. And actually, from the time I was in high school, I was in student government, you know, president, student council. So I always felt that I had something to, to offer. Yeah. And over the years, I have other leadership positions, actually well before AAA. I was the, on the executive board of the University of South Florida Alumni Association, civic and community organizations, a lot of local politics. I can pretty much pick up the phone and get through to a lot of congressmen, mayors, right? So, um, so it's a journey. So in a profession like ours, that is always looking for new ideas, fresh ideas. And the idea is, you know, you really don't want the same old, same old, same old. And, and I really view leadership in our professional societies and organizations uh, really like being a volunteer fireman, right? right. If it's your yep. time and the bell rings, put on the boots, the coat, slide down the pole and do what needs to be done. The other yep. thing is that it's incremental steps. Uh, it's very difficult to jump from, well, I don't understand uh, governance. I don't understand organizations. I don't understand Robert's rules of order. I don't really understand anything, but I want to be a leader. Yeah. You're not ready yet. You're not ready. You've got to be in an incubator, have mentors, and learn what it takes uh, in leadership. And so baby steps, crawl, walk, run. Absolutely. And I think some of that crawling comes even at the state level, maybe where you, know, you get involved in the state level, join a committee maybe, be a committee member, learn the, the, the ropes, if you will, and then jump into that position where you can Absolutely. jump all the way up to even and, president and of our find national a mentor. association. You yeah, know, mentorship find a mentor. is hugely important. Absolutely. Uh, find a good leader. There's mentor. plenty of us old farts around <laughs> that, are, that are happy to, to take you young, bright wunderkinds and wrap our arms around you and – Lead, help you lead us to the promised land. Yeah, I'm not as old as some other people, but yes, I, I do, I guess, uh, uh, I do fall into that category now of the older groups because I know whenever I fill out those surveys and they ask how many years have you been in the profession, I'm now finding I'm finding the lower and lower uh, options, yeah. which is more and more years in the profession. Uh, and I know that we can sit here and we can talk about leadership all day because I, I mean, 
I, whenever we're together, we talk a lot about some of the stuff and the, and the internal politics of our profession. But, you know, taking leadership from the audiology side and let's talk about on the business side, you know, you created this organization, the American Institute of Balance, and it's a global phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if you realize, but you're almost at 30 years here, buddy. I mean, your anniversary is coming here. 30 years. You started this back in 1992. Uh, mm -hmm. I know, again, what I said in the beginning, I see you teaching all around the world about vestibular. And it's an area that a lot of people don't really uh, realize is a great diversified portfolio for your practices. And, uh, you know, when you started this, did you think or did you even imagine how global and how much of an impact you'd be making? Well, th this when we started in 92, this was my second big adventure. Uh, from 83 to 89, we actually built the country's largest audiology private practice. My right. partner and I at that time had 13 clinics from West Palm Beach down into the Upper Keys. Um, and we were doing, so I've been doing balance since the early 80s. Yeah. And so we always knew that there was a huge demand by patients and referring physicians for these services. In 92, so we had sold to, in those days, HEREX, now here yeah. USA, we sold to them in 89. Uh, so I came back over to the West Coast and started AIB. Um, so it, it really hasn't surprised me because the world needs audiologists. Okay, audiologists can play an amazing role as gatekeepers and important resources. And, and this is not about, oh, well, I don't want to do the VNG. I don't want you to do the VNG. You should have technicians doing the VNG, students doing the. V it's like a physician saying, "I don't want to take blood pressures." Well, of course you don't. Right. The way you make money with audiology is not with your hands; it's your brains. Anybody that's gotten wealthy in audiology got wealthy from their brains, not yep. their hands. Do the math, right? Let's say we do every single vestibular test, right? The reimbursement, by the way, is phenomenal. It's over yeah. $600, right? It's phenomenal, right? Let's say I see five patients a day, five days a week. Do the math. Yeah. I yep. can't get rich. It's a business silo within your practice. Right. But now if I have fourth year students, I have technicians, yep. right? I have other people working. Now, I got to tell you, we just opened, we just did a joint venture with a great friend of ours, uh, over in Stewart, Florida. This is a solo ENT practice who sees 80 patients a day. How wow. does he do it? He has 12 extenders, <laughs> PAs, nurse practitioners, audiologists, uh, yep. hearing aid technicians. That's yep. how you do I saw, it. And I saw that. I saw that post either yesterday or this morning. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. He, that, that you guys have connected with him. And you guys currently have uh, about 60 uh, uh, specialty care clinics, correct? So can you right. talk about that and how, you know, what is the goal of the CSCs? Sure. Thanks. So many of you probably have taken courses from me, maybe even took some of your AUD online courses from me, You've been to workshops. So for decades, we were teaching the science of vestibular. About 20 months ago, that's all it is, uh, quite a few of our audiology friends and ENT friends said, Richard, look, we love all the science, but you're not sharing the secret sauce. We need the secret sauce. Without the secret sauce, it's okay, so here's how you put the electrode, and you got to do this, make sure you pop the SEM. How do you make money from this? So what we did was we created a licensing agreement Right. And in 20 months, we now have 60 audiology, ENT, and neurology practices called Centers of Specialty Care. Right. They've been so successful, like people like Ross and Jennifer Cushing yep. started out with three licenses. They now have just bought four more. They're up to seven. Uh, Matt wow. and Meredith Wilkins out in yep. Colorado bought yep. six right through yep. the core of uh, the state. So we have small practices, we have large practices, but yep. um, we hold their hands, we get them through every part of billing and coding, clinical support, marketing, patient acquisition, 
building physician referrals. It's basically a plug and play. The best thing is our strategic partner, Takeor Financial. Virtually everyone gets 100% financing. Wow. So it's like, a, it's so out of pocket. The initial out of pocket is essentially Could nothing. Could be zero. Yep. Yeah, and I know the Cushing's really, you know, Cushing's are fantastic. I, I love those guys and, and the Wilkins as well, you know, Matt and Meredith. I've known them for many years and yep. very forward thinking, you know, they've got this entrepreneurial spirit that they get it, right? I mean, I mean, the Cushing's have like 20 plus locations in the Northeast and I wow. know that the Wilkins sold their 30 plus in the Colorado uh, area as well. Uh, but, you know, my specialty has always been, and this is something I hear all the time is, you know, like for me, I focus on hearing loss and tinnitus and hearing aids. And my strengths are not really in the vestibular side. So how, how would I, as somebody who is not really strong, if you will, in the vestibular side, how can AIB help me? Great question. First of all, we're clinicians and we're professional educators. So we are the largest educator of PTs, OTs, audiologists, ENTs, athletic trainers in the vestibular sciences in the world. Mm -hmm. We have over 10,000 square feet dedicated to a training facility uh, with real live patients, training centers, online and hybrid programs. We also have AIB Academy with an AIB boot camp program. Mm -hmm. So when uh, folks are interested in acquiring a license, we can train you live, we can train you online, plus you have uh, enduring materials 24 seven. You can go to the portal and watch all the training videos in business, right. in clinical, right? If you have a fourth year student or a new hire, you send them to us, it's included, there's no charge. And they spend seven to 10 days with us at wow. the AIB Academy, uh, getting in depth from eight in the morning to six at night. Uh, AIB has a staff of 25 folks. So we've got uh, PhDs, AUDs, DPTs, uh, doctors of science. We've got, uh, we have the largest faculty, uh, larger than any other university in the country. So yeah, we're it's here actually, to support you. Yeah, and I've seen some videos. I think there was even some posts, you know, with the Wilkins, for example, you guys posted a few months yeah. back. So the, that's down in Florida, correct? Where in Florida are you at? We're in Tampa, also Tampa, known sorry. as Tidal Town. Maybe you've heard of T Tom Brady, world champion Super Bowl here in Tampa Bay. Also you the know. defending Stanley Cup, defending Stanley Cup uh, champs of the Tampa yeah. Bay Lightning and the uh -huh. American League champs, uh, the Tampa <laughs> Bay Rays. Also some of the most beautiful beaches in America, Clearwater Beach. I, so I, we, I, we, we have it. several ways up. Yeah, it, we also can go to the practice. If, they've got a, if you've got enough folks to be trained, yep. okay, our teams will come to you as well. So we right. have that option. We can yeah. train you on your site. You can come to Florida. You can do a hybrid online. But a lot of the um, background information, business, marketing, it's completely plug and play because we're the Betty Crocker kitchens. We don't right. recommend anything until the brownie mix is perfect. Yeah. So we operate, remember, AI ourselves, we see 500 patients a month. Wow. Wow. Dizziness That's and balance patients, 500 a month. So we're perfecting the, the chicken soup recipe and the brownie mix on a daily basis. Yeah, and so, so we really still publish talk, quite a bit of research. You do, you do, you absolutely do, and I see. A, I, I mean, I, I'm constantly bombarded in, in a positive way with information from AIB on research and and the programs. And you know, you touched on the CSC earlier. So if I wanted to become a CSC site, if you will, what's the process? What we would recommend is round pegs shouldn't go into square holes. So we want to make sure that your attitude and aptitude is right for this, right? So we want to do a practice analysis with you. And that usually includes myself and maybe two of our other team, team members uh, on a Zoom call with you, going through step-by-step, step, what are your goals? 
what is your background, what is your timeline, and then we'll do all the rest and lay it out for you as far as the financials, what it looks like, what happens, a scenario, or what happens if I only see 10 patients a month? Fine. What happens with 80 patients a month? We're not telling anybody to give up their traditional audiology and hearing aid practice. We're saying all you need is basically 100 square feet, a 10 by 10 room, and you should be able to generate at least $500,000 a year just wow. in diagnostic revenue. Remember the Medicare reimbursement levels. For example, CVEMP and OVEMP just came out. The uh -huh. reimbursement's $125. It's a six, seven minute test. Right. Right. Rotary chair is $117 and it takes five minutes. Right. Wow. So if, so if you look at the pro forma, I might be a scientist, but I'm a businessman. <laughs> Me right? too. So if you look at the pro forma, all of the equipment and the license is you're going to have over 60 months. The amortization is going to be about $2,600 or $2,700 a month. That's it. The end of the 60 months, you have a $1 buyout for all you own the equipment. Yep. I've had rotary chairs for 20 years. They're like workhorses. Workhorses, absolutely. Right. So yeah. $600 a test, do the math. You only need yeah. about four and a half patients a month to break even just to pay for the equipment. Right. But what we know is this, because we have real data, is that 30% of all people coming in for balance testing, diagnostics, also have an undiagnosed and untreated bilateral, aidable sensory neural hearing loss. You're not going to sell all of them, but you right. will sell 30%. So if you just pick up two or three patients, now I've done the math and I've calculated that two people have a total of four ears. Right. Okay. I didn't go to Stanford or Harvard, but I'm pretty good as long as I can use my fingers. Yeah, I'm, I'm following your math so far. Right. Go ahead. So let's say you, you pick up four incremental hearing aid sales. Remember, you had no cost of acquisition for that. That was just your normal traffic. And let's say you use an industry standard where you're making $2,500 gross profit on a set of hearing aids. That's kind of a national average. That's $5,000, right? right? So that's 5,000 times 12, right? So that would be what? 50 plus 60. another 10, 60,000. So you're yep. getting, so, right? So you're picking up maybe four to 600,000 uh, in your diagnostic, which yep. all insurances pay for, and yep. another 60 or 70,000 in incremental hearing aid business. So right. you want to get your balance census up. And that's what we specialize in building patient acquisition. Because the more, the larger the end with the diagnostic test, not only do you make revenue there, but you're going to get incremental hearing aid revenue. Correct. Yeah. And so when you talk about, you know, uh, the biggest surprise to me was the model itself on maybe hiring a tech, which I know you talked about a few minutes ago. So let's say hypothetically, we have a tech in here. Uh, where does the audiologist fit in then? Audiology should use their brains. Right. You know, um, Jim Jerger, God bless him, uh, never thought audiologists should do vestibular at all. Because the way that Al Coates did vestibular at Baylor during Jim's time there was he used audiologists as kind of technician. Right. But remember, it was a different profession then. Right. Master's degree, it was, it was different. Yep. So we believe that using fourth year students, technical support is right. critical to building this out. We see audiology as brains. Your time should be spent almost like a mater d' in a practice. I mean, yep. think about when you go to your primary care doctor or a specialist. They're not weighing you. They're not taking your blood pressure. What do they typically say? They take blood pressure. They go over yep. your meds. And what do they say? Dr. Patel will be in a minute. Yep. Dr. Patel comes in. 
She's very nice with the patients. Patients love her. Uh, fine, I see this, this, and this. Great, I'm so glad, Mrs. Jones, that you came in today. We're going to do some evaluation. And before you leave today, we're going to have a solution for you. How does that sound? Sounds oh, great. that's wonderful, Dr. Patel. Fine. Now, Bob, our fourth-year student from Vanderbilt or Arkansas, he's the, one of the best residents we've ever had. Bob is going to take you and take you through these different tests. Here's the good yep. news. No pins or needles. And in 90 minutes from now, we'll have an answer for you. Now, patient goes. Bob does the testing. Bob confers with Dr. Patel uh, outside the room. Bob, what do you think you got? Well, I have a right beating nystagmus on right gaze. The patient had vertigo four weeks ago, is feeling better. Postural stability does suggest uh, a vestibular weakness. Rotary chair supports that. Uh, there was um, a CVEP, so we know the uh, inferior branch wasn't affected. I think they're getting better and probably some vestibular rehab. Great. Now Dr. Patel goes into the office. Mrs. Jones, I have some great news for you. You're getting better. And I think if we give you some vestibular exercises over the next three to four weeks, you're gonna be as good as new. You'll be driving, you'll be playing golf. You'll be back with Ramon, the pool boy, or whatever you need to do, right? I'm going to call uh, your doctor, Dr. Rodriguez, and let her know what we found today. And I, I, I know she's going to be very happy, as we are, to give you the good news. How does that sound to you, Mrs. Jones? Now, here's an information packet. Here's what we're going to do. And we're going to set you up for therapy. Bob, Take Mrs. Jones down the hall and get everything set up. Do you have any questions for me before you leave today, Mrs. Jones? No. Do you think we were thorough with you? Oh, it was wonderful. Okay, good. We'll talk to you soon. Perfect. Cold beer, Perfect. two bucks. Yep. Perfect. It's I mean, that's that amazing. simple. And in terms of, you know, reporting to the physicians, that's probably where our brains come in, right? Where we can, we do more of the reporting on the findings. Yes, and the yeah. other great thing is that I'm going to write all the reports for you because yeah. we have the AIB proprietary software, cloud-based. All you got to do is point and click, and Richard Gans is blah, 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 right? So That's all of our verbiage. So if you have four or five clinicians, every single report looks like Richard Gans wrote it, but your name is on it. Right, Because we've, we've got all the verbiage there for every single test. Now, remember, you're not writing a textbook. Now right. you get on the phone. Call, you call up Dr. Rodriguez's office. Hey, this is Dr. Patel. Uh, thanks for sending over Mrs. Jones. Is Dr. Patel, uh, is Dr. Rodriguez available for a quick update on uh, Mrs. Jones? Oh, she's in with a patient. Don't take her out of the room. Is there a nurse there? Yeah, let yep. me put Betty on. Betty, yep. hey, this is Dr. Patel. Good news, Mrs. Jones has just got a little weakness in that right ear, probably from the herpes simplex virus, vestibular neuritis. We're gonna give her some therapy, little bit of exercise. By the way, she loves you guys. I'll be sending over a report. Perfect. Yeah, communication, right? It's so just, simple. It's so simple. I have two students this semester here, uh, AUD students are both second years. And they were shocked when I first brought this up and they, they couldn't believe how simple it can be. And now one of them just told me yesterday, she said, you know, I think I'm a little bit more interested in vestibular. And I thought, hey, that's actually very interesting. And I'm glad to hear, you know, one of the biggest myths, I think, and maybe this was myth propagated from previous, you know, in history was that vestibular is not profitable. You've definitely demonstrated that it 100% For 40 years. For 40 years. You just have to understand right how to do it. Look, yes. it's not... There's no slick willy billing here. This right. isn't billing in, oh, you can make a million. No, no, no. It's in the public record. All you have to do right. is go to the published uh, reimbursement CPT rates. CPT codes, yep. Right? Yep. ABR is $80. ECOG is $115. VEMP is $125. Rotary yep. Chair is $117. VNG is $100. Calorics are $40. Do the right. math. You, you don't yep. have to be a slick willy, to, and you shouldn't. 
You should. Uh, and there's no need for it. You can be Correct. straight as an arrow, clean as a whistle. There's absolutely no reason that you have to be a piglet and try to make money unethically right. or illegally. $600 right. for 90 minutes is more than fair. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's more than we're going to get just by doing diagnostic hearing testing by, you know, almost eightfold. And here's, a, here's the challenge with that. So let's say, and we see this all the time when we do a practice analysis, people go, oh my God, I've got all of these charts. I've got a database of 6,000 people that you sold hearing aids to. Right. No, 5,000 are, are tested, not sold. <laughs> What, what that 5,000 names to you is basically almost worthless. You're, you're not converting them. Costco, right. Belltown, Miracle Ear, Lively. Yeah, but now yeah. imagine if you say to those 5,000 people, because we do this, hey, we've got great news. Have you been dizzy in the last 90 days? Have you fallen? Are you afraid of falling? Guess what? We can help you. We've got the solution. That's amazing. Hey, listen, uh, this is great. And I know that you're coming on the cruise. You're going to spend. Well, uh, that's why time. I did this. That's why you did this. We're actually going to be yeah. on the Odd Boss cruise, which is sailing this October. We're very excited about the cruise sailing. We've gotten very, very nice reports from Royal Caribbean. I'll have the link below in the bio on not only uh, the American Institute of Balance, but also on the cruise information if you want to join us. Uh, Dr. Gans, thank you so much for taking time. I do want to read off this. Uh, you guys have generously made this offer that anybody who wants to have a free online practice analysis, you can go to www.dizzy.com backslash CSC. And that's also written down below here. Dr. Gans, really appreciate you taking the time. I got to I got to plug this. You, you got to plug my, it, plug it, please. My wife and I have traveled being here in Florida on Royal Caribbean many, many times. It is an amazing cruise line. And the Navigator of the Seas, we've been on maybe three or four times. I believe it's just been redone again. Yep. It is a absolutely gorgeous ship. And uh, I think we're sailing out of Miami. Correct. Right. If you can, you know, plan to spend a day or two before or after the cruise. Miami is an amazing city. Uh, the, the, the port is right in downtown Miami right yep. across the bridge from South Beach. Yep. Fabulous. Um, Be so we're coming down. We're coming down two days before spending a couple days in South Beach and we're going to explore, go check out the Versace mansion. And uh, we're excited and we're excited to have you. And thanks again. Enjoy Be your great. margarita today on this Friday afternoon. And uh, Dr. Gans, we will talk very soon. Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.